Did I tell you guys about the time I carried a gun into the Chicago International O'Hare Airport? No, I, I never told you guys about that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that happened. <laughs> you know that thing at the airport they play over and over again that tells you not to carry other people's bags? Oh, they mean it. Yeah, that's, that's for real. I was working for Spike and Mike's Animation Festival, and uh, we were late getting out of the show in Chicago. And uh, my boss was Mike, not Mike of Spike and Mike, but a guy named Mike. Uh, let's say Mike Sharp. That's not actually his name, but I'm trying to protect him. It's almost his name, because I'm not trying to protect him that much. <laughs> so Mike Sharp says, Keith, we're late. I'm going to return the rental cars. You grab both of our bags and run for the gate. I said, sure thing. And I ran, and I threw his bag on the thing, and it went through the x-ray. And the lady said, uh, there appears to be a gun in your bag. And I said, oh, we're entertainers. I'm sure it's a prop. Why don't you just open it up? I think there's a plastic alligator in there, too. <laughs> you know, it's, it's all fake. She goes, eh, it looks pretty real. <laughs> I was like, oh, uh, I, I don't know what to tell you. Why don't I grab the guy whose bag it is? I'll be right back. <laughs> and she says, you can't leave. And I said, it'll just take a minute. <laughs> and I left. Probably a good time to mention this was pre-9-11. <laughs> but still a big deal. There's uh, still federal presence at airports, especially international airport, and they all get a report that someone with a gun in their bag is now loose in the airport. <laughs> so people's suits are running everywhere, and I see it. I'm like, huh, I wonder what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> I still haven't found Mike, but a guy in a suit is now walking perfectly in pace with me and looking at me. So I say, can I help you? And he goes, are you sharp? And he says, are you Mike Sharp? And I said, oh, yeah, I am the guy with the gun in the bag. Boom! <laughs> I'm on the ground hard. People with suits mob all around me. They pick me up. They carry me back to where the gun is now sitting out. And oh, my God, is it a real gun. <laughs> it, is a, it is a very real gun. It had been stuffed in one of Mike's Doc Martens. I was like, oh, what is this? <laughs> so I said, listen, the bag belongs to a guy named Mike. And this cop gets in my face and goes, oh, no, 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 no. Don't try to pawn this off on someone else, buddy. You're going down. And I was like, okay, uh, but, but don't you want that guy too, you know? And she's like, oh, no, you're in deep, buddy. You're going down. And I'm like, this is, sounds like a noir film. Like, I felt like maybe I had to match her patter in order to get anything done. So I was like, I know, I'm going down, but I'm ready to sing. I'll give you the whole gang, you know? <laughs> Finally, another cop comes and interrupts this little play we were putting on. It's just, what's, what's the guy's name? And I, I tell him Mike's name and what Mike looks like. And next thing you know, I see them bringing Mike over in handcuffs, and he's mouthing the words over and over again. I'm so sorry. <laughs> they march him over. He explains to me that the, the animation festival gave him a budget for hiring private security to walk us to the bank at the end of each night with the receipts. And he realized he could put that money in his pocket if he carried his gun and just walked himself to the bank every night with the receipts. I've never had a lawyer. I've dealt with lawyers, but I've never had a lawyer. Like, oh, I'll call my lawyer. I have a friend named Brett who'll pretend he's my lawyer. <laughs> we have a cue, and he answers the phone. If I go, Wilson, he knows to pretend he's my lawyer. He'll yell back, Jensen, and I'll be like, hey, I'm at Starbucks, they're trying to charge me for a coffee refill. He's like, they're, they're what? <laughs> Haven't they ever heard of Starbucks versus Monroe, 1992? <laughs> We're gonna nail him to the wall, Jensen. He's always nailing people to the wall. I'll give you his number if you want a fake lawyer. I thought it'd be cool to have a real lawyer. Mike used his one phone call to call his lawyer. He said, my lawyer's sure that he'll get us out of here in no time. I called my parents. <laughs> What's funny is they were gonna let me go once they had Mike, but then they ran my record. And then they asked me, are you a member of a gang? And I'm like, are they thinking about Paul? <laughs> Not that I know of, <laughs> I said. They said something called the RCYB. I was like, oh, the Revolutionary Communist Youth Brigade. Yeah, they're friends. <laughs> <laughs> I am not a communist. I let them stay at my house, and I debated with them all night. Uh, now that I'm a little older, they were mostly right, but uh, we're just friends. <laughs> you know? I said, no, I am, I am not, in fact, a member of that gang. And they said, well, 
you have affiliations with this gang, so we have to keep you overnight. And I was like, ah! <laughs> They're not allowed to list you as a communist anymore. So they just list you as a member of a gang, a gang called the communists. <laughs> <laughs> it was always a way around everything. But that was the best part about calling my parents. <laughs> it's like, remember when I got arrested for being gay even though I'm not? <laughs> Where do you hear this one? <laughs> My favorite part of being in jail is always when someone says to you, what are you in for? It just feels so Hollywood, doesn't it? What are you, what are you in for? What they got you for? <laughs> I like asking it. I like being asked it. But they kept me with Mike because we were terrorists. You know, we needed to be separated from the general population. So I just kept all night saying to him, hey, what are you in for? And he kept saying, shut up. <laughs> So when they're letting us out, we're in this big line to get our stuff back, half of which they stole, no lie. <laughs> and I got this guy in front of me, and he's waiting to get his stuff back. I tap him on the shoulder. I say, hey, what are you in for? <laughs> I got to ask my question. He turns around, and he says, driving taxi without license. I was like, oh, man, they arrest you for that? He says, many, many times <laughs> driving taxi without license. I was like, oh, OK. I, I brought a gun into the airport, you know, and I'm waiting for him to be shocked, you know, whoa, like impressed, you know, and he goes, you need to get back to airport? And I was all, yeah. <laughs> he says, my taxi is outside, and that is, swear to God, how we got back to the airport. 